Hello, my friends. It's me, your host, That Dan Driscoll, here on day 20 of Chance Tober or Inktober, Chance Tober, here. And the draw today, the prompt from Folktober 2021, day 20 is Mortiford Dragon. I did not know what a Mortiford Dragon was. Uh, so I had to look it up. I had to learn something new. And Mortiford is a place. It's a place in England. And the dragon is the dragon that resides there, or resided there, before its ultimate demise. So I did a quick look, did a quick reading of a couple of different stories, and the two main characters, of course, are Maud, and the dragon. Now, as the story goes, Maud, a young child, wanted a pet, as most children do. And her parents would refuse this request as wise parents also do. And they sent her out to play. And this girl would wander off into the nearby woods. And there she found a very small, by all accounts, very cute creature. In with the flowers. Um, lizard, rep reptile type of deal with wings. And she was able to scoop it up and capture it and played with it. And she brought it home. The parents, of course, being wise parents, quickly realized that this wasn't some innocent puppy or kitten or lizard, but was in fact a very young baby dragon. Now the parents' mistake was knowing the dangers of a dragon. Didn't just up and just kill it right there, which would make sense. I think uh, you're daughter is holding a potentially venomous creature which while cute and small now could grow up to destroy villages clearly the parents knew what a dragon was and the dangers it could bring but they told Maud take that dragon out of the house release it into the wild no pets for you. And if you don't do as you say, as we say, no porridge tonight either. So Maud dutifully left their home, went back into the woods, but then deviated from her parents' wishes and hid the dragon in the woods Bye, happy day. And would visit the dragon and feed the dragon milk and berries and tamed the dragon in the woods. Now, according to the story, the dragon grew very quickly. You know, just in a few months. 
was suddenly hungry for more than milk in the little bits of scrap that Maud could bring from her home. And soon enough was raiding neighboring farms for probably small things at first. Chickens and ducks and maybe the family dog, but soon grew to need goats and cattle and the occasional farmer that it would come across. It appears that this dragon only cared for Maud. It was her it was the dragon's only friend. And Maud would plead with it to not go after the farmers and the villagers and the cattle and the sheep and the dogs and the chickens. Which makes me think somehow the dragon had some sort of sentience. A side note, uh, some of the stories I read claim that the second the dragon actually tasted human flesh, all bets were off, that it didn't need cow or anything anymore. It, it wanted, it, oh, it only wanted people. Which is odd, because I would, I would imagine the, the nutrients and protein available in the cow or much higher than the human but you know I didn't write the story I'm just thinking about it and telling it as I see it but up to this point my my thought would be the dragon would slowly grow over time I would think it would take years to get this big. That would that would that would give time for Maud and the dragon to build a very intense bond. A little more conflict as the dragon slowly and maybe behind Maud's back at first, maybe Maud didn't realize it, couldn't admit the truth that her beautiful green dragon would lay waste to her surrounding uh, villagers. In today's world, it also makes sense that the dragon would target the parents pretty quickly because it was the parents that made Maud put the dragon out into the woods. That's, that's just my take on it, though. So eventually, the villagers, the town folk, they find someone to come in and deal with this problem. And the story here, again, changes where, in one version, there is a nobleman they, they bring in to slay the beast. And he courageously does easy peasy there's another story another version that a uh, um, convict a criminal I don't believe it stated his crimes but clearly a rough tough guy that he slayed the dragon but in doing so, it, it actually cost him his own life as well. A nice uh, redemption of, of sorts. Murder the murderer. Be forgiven of murder, if you will. I imagine that this story 
had neither of those things. Or if they did, those were people that came to do the, the deed and fail epically. I would imagine that in today's tale, Maud would somehow eventually come to her senses and realize what had happened, what she had done. And she would somehow use the dragon's trust in her to get close and doom the dragon to death by her own hand. That's how I imagine it would go, you know. I doubt this story has any real world uh, influences. There aren't too many dragons running around, but maybe, you never know. These things tend to come from somewhere. So maybe there was a dragon. But more likely, this is some sort of parable for a young child and maybe listening to the child, listening to their mother or, you know, back then in ye olden days, dragons could be a symbol of of the devil, the beast, their serpent, and clearly very closely related to the devil somehow. And so this could easily be a parable for a uh, young girl, you know, flirting with evil for her own selfish gains so that would be that would probably what I would assume would be the, the thing that would be my story and maybe it will be Well, my friends, that's all I got for today. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.